After the ovules are fertilized, the flower undergoes several changes. Many parts begin to wither. Eventually, these parts are shed. Only the ovary remains healthy and firmly attached to the stem. Inside the ovary, the ovules are now about to undergo many changes. Each ovule contains two fertilized cells. The nucleus of the primary endosperm cell begins to divide to form endosperm tissue with no cell walls. The zygote divides, forming a large basal cell and a small apical cell. The basal cell produces a chain of cells called a suspensor, and the apical cell gives rise to an embryo. The suspensor now begins to transport nutrients into the young embryo. In monocotyledons, a single seed leaf or cotyledon forms. As it enlarges, the embryo also receives nutrients directly from the surrounding endosperm. During this time, walls slowly form within the endosperm tissue. A tiny shoot tip forms on one side of the embryo. Below this, there is a stem called the hypocotyl. At the base of the hypocotyl, there is a root. This is covered by a protective root cap. In most monocotyledons, nutrients now begin to accumulate within the endosperm. When nutrient accumulation is complete, much of the water is removed and the embryo enters a state of dormancy. However, a different sequence of events takes place in the ovules of most dicotyledons. In these ovules, the growing seed leaves accumulate nutrients and absorb all of the endosperm. As both types of ovules mature, the integuments develop into a tough, protective seed coat. The ovule is now a seed. At the same time that the ovule is changing into a seed, the developing embryo is releasing hormones. These stimulate the ovary to expand and make room for the enlarging ovules. In this way, the ovary wall expands and is transformed into a fruit. In most lilies, the fruit is a tough, dry capsule that tears open to release the seeds. The seeds are soon dispersed and will germinate to form new plants thus completing the life cycle.